Hello, Zaka Triple O Seven, and in today's video, I'll be going through the new features in the Windows 10 Technical Preview. Now, do keep in mind the Windows 10 Technical Preview is just a first glance into what Windows 10 is going to be like. Obviously, a lot of the main features are there, but there's a lot of things that will be added over the course until the final release is published. Now, if you're interested in setting up the Windows 10 um, technical preview on your own computer in a virtual machine where nothing bad can happen, you can check out my last video on how to do that. Otherwise, before we get started, I'd like to say I'm a little bit sorry about the um, screen resolution. Unfortunately, my virtual machine, I cannot figure out to get it to go full screen. For some reason, I could not get the driver installed to make it go the full 1920 by 1080. So unfortunately, it's stuck at this odd square resolution. The virtual machine still works fine, but uh, like I said, it's kind of a odd resolution, so it's going to show up weird on YouTube. Besides that though, guys, um, let's get started. So the first feature that everyone's talking about, and it's pretty controversial right now, obviously is the bring back of the start menu. The start menu is from Windows 7, but it's kind of mixed with Windows 8 to kind of give you a either best of both worlds or ruining Windows 7, depending how you look at it. So here we have the Windows 7 side and then the Windows 8 side, like I, to, like I like to call it. You can go ahead and pin pretty much any um, Metro app or Windows 8 app to the start menu. And it kind of uh, gets put on there very similar to the Windows 8 style. We can go ahead and pin a bunch of them here. And there are live tiles, like I said before. And you can just move around very similar to the Windows 8 style. And the more you put, the more um, sections will add. So for example, if we add a bunch of them here, it will create more rows. And theoretically, you could put enough to fill up the whole screen if you wanted to. And of course, the opposite applies as well. So if you go ahead and start unpinning everything, you'll kind of be brought back to a Windows 7-like start menu. Besides that though, guys, uh, Windows 7 start menu is pretty much identical to this one. The searching feature is the same except that it searches the internet as well. So if I search something here, you'll notice that, for example, if I type in the hack, um, the hack which was on YouTube will pop up right here uh, under search results for the web. Along with that, it will also search uh, the App Store. So this can be a dislike or a like depending on the person. Me personally, I'm not a huge fan of it searching the App Store. The internet, I'm kind of okay with, um, but the internet or at the App Store I don't really want to search the App Store for my start menu. At least that's my opinion. Shutting down the computer is a bit easier in Windows 8 as well. Uh, you guys can see right here we have the shutdown feature where you can quickly shut down the computer. I wouldn't really consider this a feature. I consider this still lousy compared to Windows 7 where you could simply go over here and press shut down quickly. Uh, Windows 8, that was one of my things that pissed me off the most was having to shut the computer down. Um, for a person who didn't create a shutdown shortcut, they would have to go to the charms bar, pull it out, press settings, then press power, then push it down. At least now it's not as bad, but it still takes three clicks to shut the computer down compared to Windows 7, which was only two. And Windows 10 is two iterations higher, so theoretically it should be better at shutting the computer down. Obviously it's not a huge deal because it still doesn't take forever, but I still wish they would just have a quick shutdown button right here, and then next to it have the option for um, restarting or sleeping or other things like that. Heading over on the taskbar here, we have the search option. The search options create a lot of controversy on the internet right now. Main reason being, you can't unpin it. Most apps, you can right click and click unpin from the taskbar. When you right click the search option, it does not give you that option. People have created hacks uh, that you can install to remove that search button, but it's kind of unfortunate that by default, that's not an available option. Anyway, though, the function of the search app is pretty simple. Um, it searches. So it will give you the trending options right from Bing. And if you click a recent search or type in a search, it will open up the search app, which simply just searches Bing. So theoretically, it's kind of a Bing app, um, but they're calling it search for now. Me personally, I kind of find it a surprising app because it's kind of the same as the search everywhere option on the Windows um, start menu here. So it's kind of a weird thing. The only difference really between the two, in my opinion at least, 
is that this one uh, gives you the trending options. So you can kind of like that or you may not like that at all. Me personally, I don't really want to see trending things on my personal computer. If I go to the internet, then I can might want to see that later. But me personally, I've never been a person who looked at trending topics anyway. So to me, um, trending topics on my desktop personally is something that I will be trying to disable once it's available uh, publicly. Heading further down the line, we have the task view. Now, this is something I am super excited about. That's when that Microsoft has finally adapted um, how many years later to Windows. And that is multiple desktops. So if we open up two different things here, you'll notice that um, they're there. And if we click the task view, we have the option to click back and forth between the two um, very quickly. Obviously, I'm in split view right now, so it's not very useful. But if I go to full screen and click, you guys can tell that it puts whatever one I click in the front view. Now, below that, we have multiple desktops. We can create a bunch of them. Um, the limit, I don't really know exactly what the limit is, I guess, until your screen can't show anymore. But simply, uh, multiple desktops are a multitasking feature that simply allows you to organize and, multi and multitask a bit better by having different spaces. So this is available already in pretty much all Linux distros and Mac OS X. So it's about time that Windows adapted to it as well. So what's going to happen is you can have things open on one desktop. So I have the Explorer here and the store. And when I switch to desktop number two or the middle desktop, they're no longer open. If you look at the icon, it'll tell you basically that it's open in a different desktop. And if you click that, it'll, be, it'll bring you over to that desktop, um, like I said before. So like I said, though, you can switch between all three of these things or as many as you have and kind of keep them organized. So again, if I open up a new file explorer on this one and switch over to this one, that file explorer is no longer open. You kind of get the point. Nice thing too is if you right click on one of them, you can say move to and select with desktop. So I can say move to desktop one and it appears off this desktop. And if you go to this desktop, it no now has the one you moved. Speaking of the Windows 8 apps, um, now they open in a windowed mode. So pretty much like a Windows 7 application, you can now um, maximize, minimize, and close them very easily. And for the Windows 8 feature or swipe down options, you can actually click the three arrows over here and I'll give you some of the options that were available in Windows 8. Now let's talk about something that's very close to my heart, the File Explorer. Now the File Explorer in Windows 10 hasn't very much been improved um, so far in this beta. Now there has been some changes, for example, the icons, and I expect more of the icons to be changed um, as time goes on. Um, but as of right now, we have some new icons mostly on the side here. But now I have a little rant. So when you first open the File Explorer, you're going to go to this new thing called the home, which I'm okay with because, you know, the home is a home. So, okay. Um, it's a nice way for people who aren't so computer savvy to go somewhere and be able to access everything very quickly. My only issue with the home is that it's pretty much identical to this PC, except you can't access devices and drives. So if you look at the home and, and this PC, the only difference is favorites is not been added to this PC. If they were to make this PC have favorites, pretty much this PC could replace home. So I'm not really sure why they have both of them. They should just merge them to one and leave it like that. Um, I'm also kind of upset that they disabled the option to have, sorry, disabled uh, desktop or the libraries over here. I always look libraries. I'm not really sure why they disabled it. Um, you might be able to re-enable it in the settings, but by default, in my opinion, they should be there because if you're going between files, it's easy to click um, desk or documents and go there quickly. The option is though, you can um, add them to your favorites. And what happens is they will be put there. So that's, that's another thing you could do. Back to my rant though, like I said, not really sure why they have a this PC section and a home section. Um, if you merge them together and then call them home PC or something, then I think it'd just be more beneficial. Other than that though, Windows Explorer hasn't really changed too much. We still have the ribbon UI. And like I said before, some of the icons are changing over. The next new feature I'm talking about is the new snapping modes in Windows 10. Now, like in Windows 7, you can snap uh, any window half and half very easily, which is really nice. Also, you can take a Windows 8 app and do the same thing, which is an awesome feature. 
Something that's new though is the ability to take a window, snap it in half. Now what happens is if you have two or things minimized and do it, it'll give you the option to pick the other one that you want to pin on the other half side. Because no one pins one half to the left side and then keeps the other side blank on the desktop like this. We are going to choose another one to put next to it. Which is a really cool feature. But the new thing that I'm kind of excited about, um, me personally, I use two monitors, so I'm not going to use this too, too much. But anytime I use Windows 10 on a single monitor, um, I'll be using this feature a lot. And this is the ability to kind of split it into fourths or thirds. So what you can do is you can take it now and kind of throw it into the corner and it'll kind of give you a one fourth view. And then from there, you can take another window and bring it into the bottom corner. And then you can pin either just one on the other side. So you can have one, two, two halves and one full or one half and two quarters. Or you can take another window if you wanted to and throw it in the corner. Now, one thing I found kind of odd though is the store app won't do it. The store app for some reason will not go any smaller than this, which is kind of funny because then you can go ahead and pin the home app explorer to do that. But for some reason, the store app will not go any smaller than what you currently see, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I can see why because of its elements, but Microsoft should have have coded something to make it shrink. Because the store app does this, um, it kind of makes a the whole snapping thing useless if you want to snap with the store app. Now I can see a lot of people saying, well, you're not going to use a store app to snap with anyway, which is true. But if you go ahead and if a developer enables this odd thing on one of their apps, well, then what happens is you're dragging something and just not, may not snap in the fourth corner. How many apps will run have this issue? I don't know. But if a lot of do, I can see this it ruining this fourth these four multitasking option new feature. Otherwise than that though, guys, that's pretty much it. The last thing I'm talking about is command prompt. Microsoft has finally decided to um, optimize command prompt a bit. So if we go ahead and open up the command prompt, uh, you can tell, I think they changed the font, I'm pretty sure. But now you can actually click and highlight things. So you notice I can click anywhere. And if I highlight for something like my uh, name here, I can go control C. They, yes, Microsoft has enabled shortcuts. So you can go control C and then go control V to paste it again, which is something extremely small. And but I'm actually kind of happy about it because how many times are you looking at a tutorial and you have to type in a long code when you can just copy and paste it instead. That's awesome that Microsoft has finally added this feature. Um, it's a very small one, but it is something I thought I'd mention for the guys out there who do use command prompt a lot. Otherwise than that guys, that is pretty much it for so far on the Windows 10 technical preview. If there's any, any updates to the technical preview and new features come out, um, I will upload a video ASAP on that. And besides that, guys, that's pretty much it. So stay tuned for more videos um, following the latest Windows 10 news and any maybe possible more leaks. And then, of course, Windows 10 officially comes out uh, with all the new features, etc. Um, stay tuned for obviously videos on that. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave your comments on this video and Windows 10 in general below. I'll be curious to read them all. And besides that, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next video. This is the Hacker 0007, and I'm signing off.